Again, welcome to church this morning and expect the best from heaven in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. We have been looking at uncovering the root of the faith that works. Faith still works today. Faith is what defines Christianity. And faith is what makes the Christian different from all other mortars on the earth. Obedience of faith is what distinguishes one believer from another. Obedience of faith is what differentiates one believer from another. Hearing the word and not doing it is deceiving one, sir. But whoever looks into the perfect law of liberty, he not being a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. James 1, 22-25. Why call ye me Lord, Lord, without doing what I tell you to do? That's why obedience of faith is what differentiates one believer from another. Obedience of faith. Obedience of faith. Obedience of faith. Obedience of faith. Why are we in the same church and getting different results? Obedience of faith. Why are we hearing the same thing and getting different results? Obedience of faith. Why are we reading the same materials and getting different results? Obedience of faith. We serve a covenant keeping God, not the Father Christmas God. Until we do what he says to do, we cannot commit him to do what he says we do. Until we choose to do what he says we should do, we cannot commit him to do what he says we do. We do what he says first. Then we are committed integrity to do what he says he will do. We do what he says first. Then we commit his integrity to do what he says he will do. Obedience of faith is what differentiates one believer from another. Not Locke, not Satan. No. When faith is actively at work, Satan is out of business. Satan is out of business. Satan is out of business. For this is the victory that overcomes the world in spite of the devil, even our faith. Above all, taking the shield of faith and you quench all the fiery darts of the devil. Ephesians 6, 16, 1 John 5, 4. When faith is actively at work, Satan is out of business. Satan is out of business. When faith is actively at work, Satan is out of business. Now, let me treat you to this interesting <laughs> um, light from heaven. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23, holding... Let us hold fast to the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Professions don't jump on people. People develop capacity in their professions. <laughs> professions don't jump on people. People develop required capacity to make a point in their profession. Faith does not jump on people. You got to develop 
your faith. We got to grow our faith. <laughs> My son here I can't wake up tomorrow in the morning and become a lawyer. No, no, no. He doesn't jump on people. As he can get up tomorrow morning and there's a pilot and he buys white shirt and then a black trouser and then carry bag. They say, what's going on, going on Pastor Isaac? He said, I'm not a pilot. Ah, between yesterday night and now? <laughs> no. <laughs> My God, faith is a profession. Yes, yes sir. But come back in Radis. Faith is a profession that requires practical engagement in developing capacity. Yes, sir. People say that to it's a profession. It's a profession. <laughs> no. It's not an apple stand. Well, it happen, it happen. Anyway, I'm, I'm born again. Born what? Why are you not born again to engineering? <laughs> no. You train in engineering. You better wake up and train. He that uses milk is unstable, is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he's a babe. Hebrews 3, 5, 13. Unskillful, so there is need for skill. You need to develop spiritual skill. <laughs> skill in the operation of faith. We need to develop it. Can I have you say with me, faith is no mere confession. Faith is a profession. That should ginger you. So all those books uh, recommended is not a, uh, Papa likes recommending books every day, every day. Every, in this church, there is no day they don't recommend books. <laughs> and there is no one you have read. It's the 45 minutes lecture that you receive. To pass a final exam. Is that how to pass? Yes, sir. You receive only lecture. You don't do any extra work. When you're waiting for a first class grade. That's last class grade. <laughs> Faith is a profession. This short boy is loaded with egging. When God told me to write, I said, what will I write again? Again has written everything. Again has written everything. We still consult today, day and night. Faith is a profession, not a mere confession. That's why every confession is now becoming confusion. Faith is a profession. Somebody's story is changing. Amen. My job this morning is to minister to you, not actually teaching, minister to you, minister to your conscience that you need to wake up. The devil is not that strong. You gave him a place. You gave him a place of prominence by not knowing how to deal with it. But today must mark a turnaround in your life. <laughs> Somebody said for you, let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Now, a principal factor here is the fact that the faith that works anchors absolutely on the world. Any faith without an anchor in the world will not work. Faith comes by hearing and understanding the word of God. Romans 10, 17. Otherwise, it's mere belief system. It holds no water in the word of the spirit. The faith that works absolutely on the world. Absolutely. 
on the world. We saw in Abraham, according to that which was spoken, and so shall thy seed be. So he staggered not at the promise of God. According to that which was spoken, for this saga, Romans 4, 18, <laughs> according to that, so Abraham, all weather faith anchored on the world. <laughs> all weather So a believer that is not committed and dedicated to what is written cannot develop faith. Only the faith that anchors on the word delivers. What is faith? Quickly. Faith is a living force. We are trying to define faith like we do in all the parts of this teaching series. Faith can be defined as a living force drawn from the living world to produce living proofs. One more time. Faith is a living force drawn from the living world to produce living proofs. And we got that from Luke chapter 8, verse 40 to 48, the woman with Israel blood. Somebody touched me, Jesus says, virtue is gone out of me. So, a living force, drawing virtue from the world to produce living proofs. Jesus is the living world. Can I hear your amen? amen? So when faith comes alive, we tap into virtue that changes our story. Somebody's story will change today. Amen. As your faith comes alive. Number two, what is faith? Faith is putting God's word to work, believing. Putting God's word to work, believing. Putting God's word to work, believing. We had no wine. Mary said, whatever he tells you to do, do it. And so they went into it unashamedly. There was no wine. We were pouring water. All of us are looking at you. Are we dummies? Are we stupid? Hmm. Putting God's word to work, believing. Children, have you any meat? They said, no. It's a cast on the right side. Right side of a boat. What's the difference between right side of a boat and the left side on the water? Same water. Whatever it tells you to do, do it. And then close great multitude of fishes. Somebody will say, whatever God will do, let him do. He won't do anything, sir, until you do what he tells you to do. God won't do anything. I've been in this church for 19 years. He tells you, that story. God doesn't know years. A thousand years, like one day to him. So what is 19 years? 19 what? That's point. Zero, 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 zero. Second. I've done my best. Well done. Self commendation, my God, is an affliction. It doesn't change people's story. You may have done your best, but you have not done the right. Do the right thing, my friend. Huh? You hardly come across anybody from an example who did not believe he has done his best. No. But then he got zero with his best. It's not about you say I got my best. Your best will be shown by this cause. Faith is putting God's word to work, believing. You have not chosen me, for instance, I've chosen you that you should go and bring forth fruit that your fruit will abide. Responsibility. And then that will launch you into a realm of favor. Whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will do it for you. No, seek your first instruction. And all these things that others are designed to get shall be added to you. So you don't see what say, just add to me. He won't add to you. He won't. 
He's too smart for that. <laughs> Somebody's told this change, you know. Is putting God's word to work believing. Not scornful of the truth. Not too bad, Neil. You know, Papa, every month there is a operation. Operation is coming again. Get ready for it. I can, I can bet you. You know, Nigeria bet. <laughs> I can bet you. The Papa, you know, May, there must be a major operation. You know, May is our anniversary. <laughs> The way I'm looking at him, that's what he's working at now. <laughs> and that's what he's working for me, my friend. Yes, yes. He's working for me like fire. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> His presence dominates my life. All those people who think they are my enemies, they're not my enemies. When they see me, they bow. <laughs> Where are you on the go for him? He goes with you. So he goes with me day and night. Oh. Whether I sleep or I wake, he goes with me. <laughs> when a lion is asleep, does he now become a sheep? No way. <laughs> Putting God's word to work, believing, is faith. It's not waiting for God to walk. Putting God's word to work. It's not weeping for God to be moved. It's not moved by weeping. Putting God's word to work, believing, it's what we call faith. Show me your faith without doing what it says to do. And I'll show you my faith by doing what it says to do. Number three, what is faith? Faith is sharing responsibility with God in the light of scriptures so as to have one's desire delivered. He said, this is what to do. And watch what I do in response. You go and do your own. Leave me with my own. My own side is secure. Your own is very able. Set two with your own. You have committed me already. Can I hear your amen? amen. Go to the pool called Siloam. That is a wicked order for a blind man who has never seen. Does he know the difference between Siloam and another? No. But whatever will you find, you find it. Go to Siloam and wash. And he went and washed and came back saying, John chapter 9, 1 to 8. Now get down to real business. The faith that works must be as follows. These are the factors that define the faith that works. Number one, fear of God rooted faith. Fear of God rooted faith. Fear of God rooted faith. What is the fear of God? The simplest definition is Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 13. The fear of God is to hate evil. The fear of God is to hate evil, pride, arrogancy, and the evil way, and the forward mouth do I hate. The fear of God simply is to hate evil. Job was a man that feared God and hated evil. The fear of God is to hate evil. Not to take pleasure in evil. Not to join in evil deeds. The fear of God is not to be jittery. The fear of God is to hate evil. Which implies to hate what God hates. And likes only what God likes. To be committed to doing what pleases God as a way of life. Pleasing God becomes an obligation for you as a person. That's fear of God. <laughs> Amen. If you consider myself and Job, there's none like him on the earth. A man that feared God and hates evil. Hates evil. Hatred for evil is what they call the fear of God. Hatred for evil. No gang up for evil. Hatred for evil. Glory to God. It's a requirement for the faith that works. The fear of God rooted faith. 
We have the examples of Daniel. Daniel chapter 6 verse 4 and 5. The presidents and all the other leaders gathered together. We could not find any occasion for Daniel. For as much as he was a faith, he was faithful, and there was neither was there any error or fault in him. That was his testimony. Daniel chapter 6, verse 4. And God delivered Daniel, Daniel 6, 23, because he believed in his God. His faith was well rooted in the fear of God. So the faith walked against the lions. And they did him no hurt. Fear of God rooted faith. We have the example of Paul. First Thessalonians 2 10, you are witnesses and God also. How holily and justly and unblameably we behaved ourselves among you all that believe. And I can do all things through Christ who sends me. And we saw him demonstrated that times and again. Times and again. They dragged him out of town, have stoned him for dead, and he was lifeless. But while they gathered to wonder what next to do about his body, he stood up by himself. God. Now, here the problem we have on this side of the world. The sorrow of them that hasten after another God shall be multiplied. So there are people who claim to be trusting God, but they are going everywhere, everywhere, by all means. Those folks will never bow to the graven image that the king set up. But these folks are bowing everywhere. They are bowing everywhere. They are bowing everywhere. So that by all means, we must make it. Make what? You can't make yourself. God said to Abraham, and I will make your name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. You can't make yourself. Except the Lord the house, the labor and the abuse. How can somebody who's down, 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 down below sea level lift you up? No. Any man from the last one and who? How can a native doctor change your story? If he knows how to change people's story, won't he change his own first? You still come around, oh Lord, oh Lord, we praise you. Oh Lord. He's laughing in heaven. What kind of human beings are these? The sorrow of them that are hasten after another God shall be multiplied. My God, it's all grace. Make you not check for me. <laughs> Don't be blind. Glory to God. I've not added one thing to Jesus. And he's decorating my life. The same way with many in this church today who, has, who have settled with Jesus. Until you settle with Jesus, he won't settle you. Until you settle with Jesus, he won't settle you. Stop making noise. When you settle with him, he settles you. It's your turn to be settled. Amen. You know where I got myself settled? Whatever God cannot do, let it remain. Whatever you can't give me, may I never have it. Wherever you can't take me to Jesus, may I never get there. Thank you. I did well. Somebody's story is changing. We are returning back to the Bible. Bible based faith. No more than the noise making. The faith that works. Not the faith we explain and trying to build ideologies around it. Number two, the faith that works is heart seated faith. 
For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Romans 10 10. If you say to this mountain, be thou removed, it comes to the sea, and shall not doubt in your heart. Nor shall believe that things will come to pass, you shall have whatsoever you say. The heart is the base, is the platform from where faith operates. Until you win the battle within, you are not going to put the victory without. Anna speak with her heart, only her mouth moved. Samuel came. First Samuel chapter 1, verse 13 to 19. The one who drew blood said in her heart, in her heart, Matthew 9, 20 22. If I remember, I told you everyone's coming, that shall be made whole. Faith is a virtue of the heart, not of the head. A virtue of the heart. Number three, dedication rooted faith. John 12, 24 to 26, except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it abides alone. But if it dies, it will bring forth much fruit. If any man serve me, let him understand this mystery. That where I am, there my son will be also. If any man serves me like that, him will my father honor. Dedication is what brings us into realms of honor in our work with God. Dedication rooted faith. We saw the example of Peter. In spite of his frustration, he let out his boat to Jesus for ministry. And Jesus dazed him. And the Bible said, he left all and followed him. Luke chapter 5, verse 1 to 11. He left and followed him. All men may be offended you, but I will not be offended. Yes, he says so. And he meant it. He followed to see the end. Only him. All of that have disappeared. We saw God then throw him on the day of Pentecost. Matthew 26, 31 to 33, and then 58, the dedication of Peter. And you saw Peter's shadow healing the sick. Chapter 5 of Acts of the Apostles, from verse 15 to 16. And we saw the dedication of Paul. Philippians 1.21, for me to live is Christ, to die is gain. He counted all things but dung. Even devils know him, knew him. Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? Dedication empowers our faith to deliver. Dedication empowers our faith to deliver. Number four, bold speaking faith. Bold speaking faith. Before I left, leave that all. Please remember the story of the three Hebrew boys. Their dedication was stronger than death. Even if it does not deliver us, we will not bow to your graven image. We are sold out to God. And God delivered them because they trusted in their God. They trusted. Their dedication boosted their faith for delivery. They trusted in their God. And they came out in grand styles. There was no smell of fire on them. That's how powerful our dedication can be in the school of faith. Bold speaking faith. When they saw the boldness of Peter and John, they took knowledge of them that they are being with Christ.
They are both they are speaking boldly in the Lord. Acts 14:3. No give witness to the word of his grace and greatest signs and wonders to be done by their hands. Bold speaking faith. David stood before Goliath and made those declarations that were far beyond the size. But they were declarations of faith. And he got them fully delivered. Bold speaking. Whatever you claim to believe, that you can't say boldly, God cannot confirm it openly. Bold speaking faith. The kind we saw demonstrated by Moses. Everything God told him to, to, to say, he said so because he believed God who asked him to say so. Pharaoh, stop there. There was not one attempt for his arrest. The whole Egypt came under a siege. Bold speaker. He said, open your mouth wide and I'll feel it. And people will not hearken to me. They are too modern for me. They are too civilized. He said, they open their mouth. I should soon have subdued their enemies under them and tore my hands against the adversaries. Psalm 81 verse 10 to 14. Bold speaking faith silences your adversaries. As soon as they hear, they shall fade away from their hiding places. As God had those bold declarations of the three Hebrew boys, he said, yes, you got it. Yes, you got it. I'll be there before you. He got there to the fear the funny before them. If he got there one second after, he won't meet them. And the picture of the fourth person was like on the son of God. It was in the fire before they came. And it's the consuming fire. So he consumed the fire before they threw them inside. Can I hear your loud and say amen? <laughs> if you truly believe what you claim to believe, then say it loud. And then he will confirm it openly. It's your turn for a change of story. Yeah. Speak no more in this name. He said, no, we rather obey God than you. And that silenced them. It's your turn to have your enemy silenced. The faith that works, number five, testimony provoked faith. Testimony provoked faith. Every testimony of the Lord is prophetic. Revelation chapter 19, verse 10. Revelation 19, 10. And I fell at his feet to worship him, and he said, See thou dost not, because I'm thy fellow servant. And of their brethren that have the testimony of Jesus, worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is a spirit of prophecy. Or the testimony of Jesus is prophetic. It's a pointer to what God will do in the life of anybody else who claims to come on key as the testifier. My God, every testimony of scriptures is prophetic. Every testimony of scriptures is prophetic. Jesus is the living world. So the testimony of Jesus means the testimony of the world, the testimony of scriptures. Every testimony of scriptures is prophetic. Every testimony of scriptures is prophetic. Every testimony of scriptures is prophetic. Let's come awake. Amen. I saw in my Bible I've been redeemed as a priest and they came to reign on the earth. I saw that 1970. I was wearing a royal cloak. I saw me in royalty. There was no amazing word. God was speaking to me. He was speaking to me, my God. As he's speaking to you, what I say to one, I say to all. I saw my prosperity from Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. My son David, 
Uh, my prophetic plan is not a promise. It doesn't answer to prayers. And I received that prophetic word and I came out of every main, every trap of lack and want. Tenos canoba, rato se gloria That's 41 years ago, sir. Every testimony of scriptures is prophetic. Now, that woman told him of his garment and was made whole. Matthew 9, 20 to 22. Everybody was clamoring to touch. And as many as touch were made perfectly whole. Testimony provoked faith. Matthew chapter 14, verse 36. As many as touch, everyone that touch were made perfectly whole. And they besought him that they might touch the hem of his garment. And as many as touch were made perfectly whole. How are they clamoring? Because of the testimony of the woman with the issue of law. If he's passing here today, no matter how many securities are in about, I will, I will touch him. I will touch him. <laughs> Somebody said, throw me there. Throw me on him. So I can touch only, not just the hem of his garment, his body. And as many as touch were made what? Don't be entertained by testimonies. Be instructed. Don't sit down and be clapping about testimony. Be instructed by those testimonies. What did this individual do? For God to have done what he did in his life. And if you're interested, connect. Connect and commit. Connect and commit. Connect and commit. Connect and commit. I saw the testimony of abundance in the Copeland. And I said, Jesus... Show me what to show them. Praise God. My God. Show me what to show them. Somebody's told is changing. <laughs> My prayer today is that no one among us will be a victim anymore. Yeah. But an overcomer indeed yeah. in all areas of life. David said, God who gave me the lion and the bear, he will give me this big for nothing Goliath today. I'll bring down your head. And he did. The testimony of the past gave him the victory of the present. God has done amazing things in your life, but you, you forget so cheaply. You forget so often. He said, they forgot my hand when I brought them out of Egypt. So they provoke me often. They provoke me often. God has done some things in your life. You can put your finger on it, but they have become normal to you. They have become ordinary to you. And so you are losing the present battle because you forgot the last testimony. You draw victory for the present from the past victory. That's how it works. David he didn't kill the lion and the bear. He was too small to kill the lion and the bear. That God delivered them to me. Can I hear your amen? amen. You are walking free. Amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Finally, number six, a never give up faith. The faith that works is a never give up faith. Luke chapter 9, verse 62. Whosoever puts his hand upon the plow and looks back, is not fit for the kingdom of God. No looking back. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man turns back from faith, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Hebrews 10, 38. If any man turns back, at any point he turns back, that's all. We have here the example of Abraham. He followed through to the end. He staggered under the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. He never turned back faith. Never give up faith. Daniel will not. Not with the threat of the den of lions. He opened his windows and began to make his supplications to God three times a day as he did a four time. Never give up faith is an ever winning faith. A never give up faith is an ever winning faith. A never give up faith 
is an ever-winning faith. A never-give-up faith is an ever-winning faith. Two months to the dedication of this sanctuary, <laughs> we were still trying to complete the roof. And then there would come in the electrical, the everything. My God, and he, he finished it. In two months, two months, too much. Never give up faith. All we need to do is to say, well, you see, you understand. God knows we can go on. Let's move it now to December. And from December, let's move it to April. From April, move it to Sept September. You'll be moving and moving till you have nowhere to land. Never, a never give up faith is a guarantee for an ever winning faith. Ever winning faith. Ever winning faith. It draws strength from a never give up faith. A never give up faith. A never give up faith. It's your turn at last. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. Let me treat you at this point to something we mentioned on the 10th of April, 19, I mean 2023, about the seven prophetic pillars that came our way as a commission. April 10, 1982. Many laughable statements that should not come out of ordinary folks like us without any background or anything. <laughs> I mean, God released those seven prophetic pillars <laughs> and brought them to pass one after the other. Of his name. Amazing prophetic words have gone in your direction, but let me tell you what happens. How to see prophecies fulfilled raw in your life. Now, watch what the Lord was saying. Number one, the destiny of this age has been committed to your hands. What? You? Age? You know the meaning? That's talking about generational impact. The destiny of this year has been committed into your hands. Now, two, this ministry is not limited to this country, but to several other nations of the world where vibrant churches shall be planted. Mm. We were 68 people in that meeting. April 10, 1982. This ministry shall not debate over doctrine, but shall prove the power of the Holy Ghost. So, no debate. Raw manifestation of the power of God. Three. And now four, you'll be speaking from one spot. You shall be seen on the screen across the nations at the same time. How? It wasn't there then. I saw wings flying and I said, what are these, my Lord? He said, these are aircrafts. What? Which were inside. They are the everlasting gospel of Christ across the nations. Aircraft ministry that has no behind it. Then at the base of the ministry, a tent shall be that you will see 50,000 people. We are there now. 50,000 people was a daydream in those days. You don't imagine it. That there's no garden anywhere in the world that had it for church. So here we are today. And number seven, the printing press of this ministry shall operate at an industrial scale, including printing of Bibles. Come on now. Are we there? Give the Lord another big hand of praise. Now, what are our takeaways after 41 years? Of saying rough movement of prophecy it concerns these seven prophetic pillars. Watch, please wait and see. Only God can do what He says He will do. Can I hear your amen? amen? God only requires that we do what He commands 
so he can do what he says he will do. We should not be bothered about what God says he will do. We should only concern ourselves with what he commands us to do. Knowing that God is far more faithful than we are, when we do what he tells us to do acceptably, we have committed him to do what he says he will do. God is simply saying, do what I say and leave me with the rest. None of those prophecies was pursued. We kept doing what he says to do and he kept confirming them one after the other at his own time. We can only do what he asks us to do because the commandments are not grievous and he doesn't tempt anybody with evil. We cannot do what he says he will do. It's beyond our capacity. Keep doing what he says to do and watch him as he keeps doing what he says he will do. Don't try to do what he says he will do. You and I cannot afford it. We don't have the capacity for it. Keep working with him. And he could confirm in his word in our lives. If only we choose to do, choose. If only we choose to, there is nothing that he asks us to do that he has not engraced us to do. But no one of us has capacity or resources to do what God says he will do. No one can do what I say I will do. That's what God told me. Because only my hand can deliver my plan and purpose. Whatever I tell you to do part time, keep doing it. And watch him as he keeps confirming his word step by step, stage by stage, face by face in your life. These seven prophetic pillars came to light on their own. On their own without anybody pushing for them. And just simply doing what he says to do part time and he's confirming what he says he will do. Beginning from now, no prophetic word will fail in your life. Amen. God has ordained this year as your covenant highway, getting you on the covenant highway of life. You'll never be found on the byways anymore. Amen. You'll never be found on the street corners anymore. Amen. You are coming out of obscurity to the limelight. And you get there by doing what he says to do for the hour. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. It's his job to get on the covenant highways. Your job is to keep doing what he says to do. That's our story. There was none of this we had to save money for. Not one. There was none we would have planned for if he didn't bring it to pass by himself. There was none. If God had asked me, when do you want to buy aircraft? I said, Father, please. Hold it. It's not in plan and it's not in view. <laughs> he built this place. We didn't have a plan to start it. Our plan was to divide this for farmers. Farmers in the church to be farming. To secure the land. And he said, this happens you have dedicated September 18, 1999. So he built it. Now, can you guess the sign? They were on the drawing board. When I said, how, many, uh, uh, how much space have you got in this design? They said about uh, 40. I said, what? Ah, wait a minute. I said, there's a record. There's a record. There's a record. So it was not being pursued. People are pursuing prophecy instead of pursuing God. Pursue God, my friends. And you confirm his word in your life. Keep doing what he says to do. Keep doing what he says to do. Keep doing what he says to do. Leave the remaining to him. He's more faithful than you. He's more faithful than me. So commit yourself to what he says to do. For instance, Okay, bring four souls for God's sake. Four souls, four established souls. You don't need any high level intelligence to do that. Four souls with all the contacts we have in the world. No, but there is no commitment. Did you pray for four? Ever pray? No. 
Ever strategize? No. Ever identify? No. You can't treat his word with levity and expect him to treat you with dignity. You cannot treat God's word with levity and expect him to treat you with dignity. You can't. You draw near to me, I draw near to you. You draw far from me, I draw far from you. I pray that this year no one shall be left on the byways. No one shall be left on the street corners. Everyone will find their way on the covenant highways of life. In the name of Jesus. The days of frustration, stagnations are over in your life. The days of begging for survival, they are over in your life. The days of believers, unbelievers asking you where is your God, they are over in your life. If all those amazing prophetic pillars were not pursued and yet they were fulfilled there, pursue after God. The Lord said to me, the harder you follow me, the higher you fly. Psalm 63 verse 8. My soul followed hard after thee, O God, and thy right hand upholded me. The harder you follow me, the higher you fly. Simple, sir. Thank you, Jesus. Today is our special monthly anointing service, and we are going back with the seal of enough is enough. For it shall come to pass in that day, not in those days. In that day, it's a day. It's a day. And today is that day. Amen. Isaiah 10, 27. It shall come to pass in that day. Hmm. That the burden shall be taken away from off your thy shoulder. And the yoke of the wicked from off thy neck. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Today is that day for you. Today is that certain day for you. The burden of the wicked shall be rolled away from your shoulder. The yoke of the devil shall be destroyed in your life. Everything choking your life. God is saying enough is enough. By the power of the anointing, today is that day you have been waiting for. Yeah. 